Hey again, everybody. It's Guardian Enzo here. And I uh, want to wish everybody happy holidays and a happy new year coming up. And I just wanted to try a new thing for the channel here. And that's a travel video. I may do a few of these. Uh, obviously not doing a lot of traveling right now, what with the situation in the world. But I did want to get out a little bit over the winter break. So I decided to head to Kyoto which is close by to me. It's a short trip and uh, concentrated on outdoor places and places with uh, hopefully not huge amounts of crowds for the most part, but boredom will do what boredom will do. So I had to get out. <laughs> I had to see a little bit. I uh, had to see a little bit of the area. Been cooped up for too long, uh, too many hours at home. So here we go. So uh, again, this is a bit of a new format for me. We'll see how this goes, but just trying out, uh, just trying out the idea of uh, taking you guys on a little bit of tour of the area. And I actually uh, started out in Nara, which is the neighbor of Kyoto, and was the capital before Kyoto was actually, as many of you know. And started out at a temple called Yakushiji which was founded in about 730. So very, very old temple, one of the oldest temples in the world. Most of the buildings are relatively new, actually, because of the traditional scourge of fire. But we do have a, uh, this is the main hall there, which was rebuilt in this, uh, in the 20th century. But the most interesting historical building is the East Pagoda, which uh, dates from, I think, the 8th century, I think. Uh, one of the oldest wooden structures in the world outside of Horyuji in Nara, which is the oldest wooden structures of any temple in the world. Uh, so that's Yakushiji. And uh, Nara, as you know, is the home of deer. And uh, the local authorities have given the deer a, a helpful diagram as to how to harass the tourists more effectively. And uh, the next place I went in Nara was uh, Kasuga Taisha, which is a very ancient and a very beautiful shrine up above the town area where most of the main temples are. As you can see, plenty of deer as far as the eye can see. Deer everywhere, very tame. They'll even bow for food, some of them. And uh, we had, I guess, I don't know, maybe not yearling deer, but definitely time for young deer in the winter. You saw a lot of them following their parents around. They're uh, incredibly tame, as I said. Uh, no fear of people whatsoever, as far as I can tell. So next we went to Todaiji, and Todaiji, of course, is a massively important temple, and among the things I went to is the uh, Nigatsudo Hall, which is the sort of an upper Todaiji area, which you can get to across a very, very beautiful walk from Kasuga Taisha, sort of still up above the Nara Park area to the east, M plenty more deer. Uh, Kasuga Taisha, Ta Ta incredibly atmospheric, there's Nigatsudo Temple, uh, really quite beautiful Nigatsudo Temple, uh, some beautiful artwork, some beautiful quiet little corners with Jizo statues and uh, standing by the side of the road, which some of these alcoves at least have been there, I'm sure, for a very, very, very long time. And there in the distance, you can see the Great Buddha Hall, where they, which is the largest wooden building in the world, in fact. Uh, that's down at the end of this road. You sort of go from Nigatsudo down to the main, uh, the main temple area at Todaiji, and that's uh, that's their bell, which is one of the largest bells in the world. I think Chionin in Kyoto may be the biggest bell in Japan, but this is one of the biggest. There's the Great Buddha Hall, which is in fact the largest wooden structure in the world, the oldest at Horyuji, the largest at Todaiji. And uh, just, you know, just a really beautiful place, Nara. Lots of interesting smaller temples. I actually went and did some sake tasting there at Harushika, which means spring deer, the Harushika sake tasting distillery there you can do. Very nice. Next day, we went back to Kyoto. We went to Kitano Tenmangu, which is a very interesting shrine in the northwest of the city, which has a great market. There you see a... Uh, a stall for exclusively for uh, Kimetsu no Yai material at this uh, at the market, which they held the 25th of every month. And then to Kyoto, uh, Kyoto Botanical Garden, which is one of those undiscovered sites in Kyoto that not a lot of people go to. It's very, very near the subway in the northern part of the city in Kitayama. Poinsettias for Christmas. 
uh, interesting water lilies. Uh, it, just a beautiful botanic garden. If you like that sort of place, it's very relaxing. Lots of space, not a lot of people. Uh, cacao, cacao pods there, soon to become chocolate. Uh, just, uh, oh, some cactus as well. Very interesting uh, botanical gardens here with lots of, uh, lots of plants from all over the world, not specifically Japan. Beautiful conservatory in the garden there, which was nice and warm on a rather chilly winter's day. And the usual hodgepodge of somewhat, somewhat surreal Christmas decorations, which you see all over Japan and Kyoto Botanical Gardens, certainly no exception. Then for a burrito at Que Pasa, my, my question, can Japan do a good burrito? And the answer in this case is yes, Japan can do a good burrito. Que Pasa, quite a delicious burrito, probably the most delicious burrito I've had in Japan, although that's a very low bar. Then walking back into town, uh, Shirakawa Canal, one of the most beautiful parts of town. Back to Kyoto Station, which was uh, likewise dressed up for Christmas. And the, the grand stairway there, which is one of the most beautiful you'll ever see, had some interesting Christmas lights, as you can see. Next day takes us to Daigoji Temple, which is a large temple complex uh, way out in the uh, southern part of Kyoto. Uh, it contains uh, some buildings that were built in the Hideyoshi's era, including the Samboin Garden which is a very beautiful garden, which Hideyoshi himself supposedly designed. That's what they say. A very beautiful garden. No question about that. Whether he actually designed it or not, I don't know. But it is one of the more beautiful gardens I've seen in Kyoto. And that is a pretty high bar. Yeah, as you can see, uh, just, a really, just a really nice, really serene place. Daigoji does not get a tremendous number of tourists. Compared to the main temples in Kyoto, because you have to go on either a bus ride or you have to go uh, a couple of different trains and a walk to get there. And uh, it's very quiet. It's a little bit run down, but that run down quality in the temple on the mountainside gives it a sort of a sort of a serene atmosphere quality that a lot of the more uh, up to date temples in Kyoto don't have. The ones that are tourist friendly like Kumizadera which are the upkeep is a little more, a little more, uh, I guess, spick and span, you could say. Daigoji, I think there were maybe three or four people the whole time I was there, uh, which was on Christmas Day, actually. This is their pagoda, which is uh, dates to 794, which is the oldest uh, wooden structure in Kyoto, actually, is the pagoda at uh, Daigoji. And again, there's a nice reclining Buddha for you. Daigoji, a nice escape from the city. Like in Yosemite, if you get out of the valley, you get away from 95% of the tourists. So it is with Kyoto. If you just get a little bit out of town, you do ditch almost all of the tourists. And you have a much more personal and a much more much more relaxing experience. Temples more in their natural state. And as you can see, Daigoji is a really impressive layout. Uh, a couple of beautiful gardens. Uh, and this one, this is not even the Samboin garden. This is a sort of the secondary garden, which is up on the hillside. And you can actually hike up to the top of the mountain at Daigoji called Kami Daigo. There's another little cluster of buildings up at the very top, but it's a tough hike to get up there. There's that pagoda again, the oldest, uh, the oldest wooden structure in the Kyoto proper. Uh, Hayao Horyuji has, uh, old structures, but that's the oldest in Kyoto. Next, we went to Kamyo In, which is a very small temple as a, a part of the Tofokuji temple complex, not too far from Shimi and Ari Taisha. Uh, very unknown temple, not a lot of visits, but really, really beautiful. Beautiful sand garden there. Very interesting architecture. This one dates from the 14th century, in fact. Very beautiful stone garden, uh, sand, moss. Just a quiet retreat. Really interesting architecture. It's one of those small, humble temples like Honenin in Kyoto is the same. A small, humble temple that's nevertheless extremely beautiful and possessed of some of the most, uh, some of the most, uh, some of the most beautiful architecture in a very small way. I love round windows. Round windows are some of the uh, most beautiful, uh, most some of the most famous too, but some of the most beautiful bits of architectural splendor in Japanese temples. 
And Corey, uh, again, I just spent about half an hour there, just wandering around, staring at the garden, looking at the small, looking at the small architectural details, uh, the moss, the rocks, the tea rooms. There are several tea rooms with alcoves at this temple. It's not, it again, very much off the tourist trail. I think there might've been one or two other people the whole time I was there, but uh, that's okay. I think it's nice to get out of the mainstream in Kyoto and even on days when there are a lot of tourists around, it, you don't have to go too far to evade most of them. And so it is Komuin, uh, almost like your own private temple. Finally, we finished at arguably the most famous spot in Kyoto, which is Fushimi and Aritaisha, which dates all the way back to the year 711, February, in fact, of 711. Very famous, justifiably so. One of the coolest, most atmospheric places. Tens of thousands of Chori gates and lots of cats as well. There's a tremendous number of cats there. I don't know. Uh, I must have been to this. Uh, I must have been to Fushimi Nari at least 25 or 30 times, but I can't be in the area and not stop by. And uh, since I was doing a video here, I thought I would just stop by Fushimi Nari give you a few give you a few looks at it you really have to experience Fushimi and Ari though you can't you can't you can't go buy somebody else's video for Fushimi and Ari it's uh it's it's unique it's a unique place and that was my little trip to Kyoto over the holidays and uh, I hope you enjoyed it and as I said, I may do a few more of these as, uh, as, as the mood strikes me. I'm not going to be doing a lot of traveling, certainly, until things calm down in the world and in Japan. But when I am able to get out and about a little more, uh, I'll take some photos, I'll take some videos, and I'll be sharing them with you here. And again, I want to thank you for stopping by. If you like what you see, please like, please subscribe. It would be much appreciated. And of course, uh, your thoughts in the comments as well. And uh, I look forward to uh, I look forward to spending the new year giving you a few more end of year anime treats and such. And uh, I hope it's a great new year for everybody. And I hope 2021 shows the world is a much better place than it was in 2020. Thanks a lot. Stay frosty.